Hello and welcome to the channel, my name is Annalisa, and today I am doing a wrap-up of the Femme Fantale Readathon, hosted by Jean Bookish Thoughts and Jill of the Book Nook. But I'm interrupting your regular programming to give you a I'm okay update. Skip the time code on the screen if hearing about COVID stresses you out, because I don't want to do that to anyone, but I just want to experience and spread a little solidarity when, uh... Things are a bit crazy out in the world and a lot of people are having to stay home and having job trouble and school trouble even beyond the fear of being sick. So just so you know, me and mine are fine. I have a cough and sneezing but I've had that ever since the trees started putting out their little leafies for the spring because we had a massive Chinook come in in February and spring came early. The trees are regretting that now because it's freezing really hard this week but my cough and sneezing are related to allergies. I don't have a fever or sore throat. My dad is retired and my mom is a healthcare worker, so we aren't affected monetarily. And even if most of us get infected, we're not in danger, but I do have a brother who's immunocompromised, so I'm a little worried about him. He is a world-class hermit, though. The only place he's gonna get infected is when he goes to a drive through inevitably, because he does love his fast food. And he doesn't live with us, so we're not in danger of bringing things home to him, but we are still self-isolating, just to keep from infecting and spreading germs to other people. I'm concerned for all the people out there who might be affected if they do get sick, and also for all the people who are being affected other ways, like people who work in sit-down restaurants and several other industries, as well as all the people whose kids are now at home because the schools have been closed. I am concerned about, I'm praying for them because that's a thing that I do, but that doesn't mean that if I see a way to help out in other ways, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> but if you are in a situation that you are being especially negatively affected by this, know that I care about you, and if there is any way that I can help, I hope you will tell me about it. Anyway, about books, I read this many, kind of, in that uh, I DNF'd one of them and I read two thirds of another because it's a collection of three short stories. They're kind of in the middle where they're kind of the length of a novelette, but nobody calls anything a novelette. It's, a, it's, it's like it's a short story if it's a novella. a novella, but I'm counting it for the novella prompt for Femme Fantale. But that's the last book I read, so I'll tell you about that at the end of the video. The first book I read I actually don't have because I had to take it back to the library, and I'm not going to talk about it very much here because I actually was reading it for a video that's going to come out in a couple of weeks that is on a particular topic slash group of books, and I had to just hurry and finish it up during the Femme Fantale because it was due back to the library, as I said. Fortunately, it fit relatively well. It has mermaids, which I consider a fantasy creature, but they were treated in a very sci-fi type manner, so it's kind of in that in-between area where sci-fi and fantasy cross over with each other. It was a meh for me and I skimmed through the last half of it because it was just going so slow. Which is kind of weird because it's supposed to be a thriller slash horror book, but it w it was it got bogged down in the science a little bit. Which I like reading about science, especially if it's like science about mermaids, but it was just a bit much for what was going on in the story. But I'll tell you more about that later. The second book that I read during Fan Fan Tale was Pandora Gets Jealous by Carolyn. Tennessee. This is the beginning of a series of about seven or eight books that is a retelling of the Pandora myth. In this case, Pandora is a 13-year-old girl who accidentally opens the box because she decides to bring it to school for a show-and-tell type project, and this and the rest of the books are about her tracking down all of the evils that she has let out into the world through this box and putting them back inside. Which is not how the original tale goes, but I really like this twist on it, especially because the original Pandora story is really terrible and is just a dude really hating on women. So I like that a woman reclaimed this story and made a fun middle grade tale out of it. This checks off the inspired by myth prompt and kind of the historical fantasy prompt because it sounds like the author did a pretty good job of researching ancient Greece. A lot of locations, ways of dressing, and customs are talked about in this book and I like that a lot. Obviously they're fantasy-ified and middle grade-ified, but still it sounds like it's grounded in facts. I also like how the myth is very, very much present because we get to meet pretty much all of the Greek gods, both on Olympus and as kind of more classic encounters and using gifts given by the gods, like magical rope and magical nets. It's also very female-centric as Pandora has two best friends who are also 13-year-old girls, and they are her sidekicks for this adventure. 
Then I started the one I was actually the most excited to read, which is Alana, The First Adventure by Tamora Pierce. I hate this cover. It's not like that horrible of a cover, but like compared to the really good covers that this series has had, because it has been recovered so many times, this is just the most boring one. Also, it's supposed to be about her when she's 10 to 13. So does she look 13 at the oldest to you? I don't think so. But anyway, I thought this was more YA when I was remembering it because I haven't read it for like four or five years. But now it's pretty dang middle grade, which suits the age of the protagonist. Uh, apparently this is one of those ones that ages with the protagonist because I definitely remember that the next book is YA and the next ones and the two after that that are when she's 18 to like 20 something are kind of between YA and adult. And I really enjoy that type of aging, but I don't remember noticing the big age difference between this first book and the later books about the same character when I first read it when I was like 10. But I probably just wasn't as sensitive to those differences back then. Anyway, I talked about the basic concept of this in my last video, which was an art video about painting a fairy knight. And I talked about it because that painting kind of suited the same prompt as this one, which was Woman with a Weapon. And this also fits published pre-2000 because it was published in 1983. I did not realize these were that old. Although it does make sense because she keeps writing and this was the first book set in this world and she's written a bajillion books set in this world since then. But still, I did not realize this was 14 years older than me. Which is why the original covers were so good because fantasy covers from the 80s were dang good. But basically it is about a 10 year old girl who has a brother who is her twin and shows she switch places with him so he can go to mad school and she can become a knight. She has to hide the fact that she is female to be able to learn to be a knight and we have the added complication that she is also a madge and people at the palace like to ignore magic and kind of push it to the side because they've been somewhat traumatized by it in the past and so has she in her personal life because her mother was unable to be saved by magic when she died when they were fairly young. I don't think it was in childbirth. I think it was a while after that. She has to learn how to manage all these different things going on and her magic coming into being a big deal in her life because she is actually a very powerful mage, though untrained. And she has some pretty interesting episodic mainly adventures, as well as the overarching storyline that takes her from a vision when she is 10 years old before she sets out to the final confrontation in this black city. She's really cool and imperfect and I identify with her a lot because she's super stubborn. I'm really glad I finally read this again. She is my hero. Several of the other characters from this book are also my heroes, such as Miles, who is her history professor, and George, who is a thief she meets in town. And it turns out he's the king of thieves and he's really awesome even though he's only 17 and he's generally adorable. Next, I started the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin. This is one of the biggest, most acclaimed fantasy works by a woman of color from the research that I've done. Won a bunch of awards, a bestseller, and I was looking for something to read that would complete the BAME author prompt, which is uh, B-A-M-E. It's the British way of saying POC. And so I thought I should read it, forgetting that best-selling and having awards are not good predictors of me liking a book. I think it's a really good book and an important book, but it is not up my alley. It is depressing the entire way through. I got past 100 pages and nothing happy or nice or even a rest from the constant misery had happened and uh, I was sitting at the dinner table <laughs> with a sad look on my face and my mom asked me why I was sad and I said I was reading a sad book and she said, I don't think you should read that book anymore. So finally I had my permission to uh, DNF this book, which the way I DNF is I skipped to the end and discovered that, yep, it's still unhappy at the end, so no thanks. Basically it is about this horribly oppressed group of people called Origins who have power over the earth. They can make or stop earthquakes they can also do some other magic by drawing energy from the earth. And there are these people called guardians who can nullify their powers, which is how the ruling class of this society controls them. And they have spent generations training these origins to think they are less and, ha and have put a guardian over little groups of them and 
given them abusive, controlling relationships so that uh, they can beat down these people and control them that way. <sighs> it's very heavy. There is also breeding going on, human breeding, which is a thing that also happened during slavery, which I suspect this is um, related to. And I was uh, reminded of that when I recently read The Tubman Command, which is going to be in the same video as Into the Drowning Deep, by the way. But um, in The Tubman Command, we saw it. It was told that it had happened to a character in the past and it was going on with other people currently, whereas we are, it's happening to the perspective character in this book which is extremely distressing. So trigger warnings for that and also abusive relationships, as I said, and child death, uh, like the main character's child. Generally, horrendous racism and oppression and uh, probably lots of other things that happened in between the 300 and some pages that I skipped. The whole series of which I think it's a trilogy is called the Broken Earth series and so the the point of it and what the kind of overarching thing that's going on is one of these origins have decided to destroy the world and like break it via gigantic earthquakes a la Kiyoshi when she separates her little island from the mainland except the big chasm goes around the entire world and uh, big volcanic ash comes out and kills everybody. Not a spoiler, that happens at the very beginning of the book, but it's a flash forward and then we see in other timelines what has led up to this and why someone would be driven to destroy the world even though they're still living on it basically by all this horrible oppression, which makes sense and good way of writing a story, but very distressing for an over empath such as myself. But I'm still counting it as read because I read a significant portion. But anyway, while I was trying to read that, I read A Curse So Dark and Lonely because I was slowing down really bad and I wanted to finish a few more books before the readathon was over. I love the cover, especially how blue it is. Like, it's quite vibrant. And I really liked some of the characters. The three main characters are pretty great. I like a few of the extra side characters. My absolute favorite character was definitely Grey. And it wasn't in any way a bad book. It just didn't wow me. Like it doesn't break my top five Beauty and the Beast retellings. I love Beauty and the Beast retellings and this just didn't do it for me. I decided it was probably because there's no library slash books involved and all my favorites involve the people bonding over books, sometimes over library, sometimes because she's a scribe and he's having her translate things for him. Uh, sometimes because <laughs> she's sad and he gives her books to make her feel better, you know, all those types of things that really get my heartstrings pulled. This one didn't have that element. It had, it went in a different direction with the retelling. And also the Beast character didn't have the classic heart on the outside, gushy on the inside character. He was a bit more like Rysand from the Akamath. And while I like Rysand a lot, the traumatized, charming, pretty boy is just a different personality and it's not what I want in a Beauty and Beast retelling. Grey was much more of a classic Beast character type personality, hence him being my favorite character. I thought the cerebral palsy representation was cool. It was just an aspect that was going on. It wasn't her main personality trait. And I like the extra world building that went outside of the classic tale and built a kingdom and had the prince able to interact with his kingdom to a certain extent. So not bad, but just meh. I forgot to say this fit the fairy tale retelling prompt and the YA prompt. Then I wanted to read a happy book, so I picked this up, A Little Magic by Nora Roberts, because Nora Roberts does happy books really good. They often have sad elements in them, but that's always a minor thing compared to all the nice happy feelings. This was a bit different from what I usually read from her. So this is a group of three novellas fitting that prompt as well as the adult prompt, which the fifth season also fit. So these are all romances that take place in Ireland and are witchy. In the first story, the main female character is a witch. In the second story, the hero's great-grandmother was a witch and her magic has been passed down to interfere with his romances. 
and I'm not sure about the last one because I only read the first two. Didn't quite have time to start the last one, but I really enjoyed the first two. They are more insta-love-ish than my preferences, but that's kind of how it has to work if you're gonna have a romance in a novella because you can't really slow burn something in a hundred pages. The conflict is mostly about people accepting their feelings and the actual characters seem to have more of a preference for slow burn romance so they have to kind of get over that and realize that they really do love this other person and it's not just uh, magic or enchantment that has made that happen. They just happen to be lucky enough to find the perfect person magically. And all four protagonists are quite different from each other but the two male protagonists look quite similar. They have black hair about the same length and they both got the whole high cheekbone thing going on but personality wise they're very different except that both are artists. One is a photographer and one is a sculptor and they both want to make art of their lady loves naked. Okay so a bit weird and unusual for me but I like the magic portion and the Irish portion of Mary into Ireland and it was just the happy pick-me-up that I needed after A Curse So Dark and Lonely and the fifth season. I started an audiobook, The Girl Who Drank the Moon, but I wasn't able to finish it because it's only an eight-day readathon. But I had several audiobooks slated to come in, but they didn't come in until really late in the readathon. And then they also didn't fit any of the prompts that I didn't already have checked off. The one that would have fit a prompt that I didn't have checked off was uh, Every Heart a Doorway, which is queer in that it has an ace main character I think or it has good ace rep anyway and I really wanted to read that for that prompt and I put a hold on it quite a while ago but it didn't come in until late last night so oh well that will probably be my next read so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye